In this video, I'm going to give you nine practical tips from composition to editing to upgrade your black and white street photography skills. These tips I've put to use in my own street photography, taking my black and white images from average shots like these to shots I'm really proud of like these. But firstly, why black and white? Well, it's timeless. When you shoot in black and white, you're following in the footsteps of all those 35mm film photographers who pioneered the genre of street photography back when black and white was the only option. Shooting in black and white also removes any distraction on the street, so you're not overwhelmed by things like colour. It can simplify things, reducing the world to tones, contrast, texture and shapes. Even if you usually shoot in colour, I definitely recommend trying black and white. You can change things up and add some more skills to your portfolio. Also, if you're a beginner street photographer, black and white can be a great way to get started and learn how to make amazing street photos. There are two main ways to go about black and white street photography. The first is to go out and shoot as normal, but keep your eye out for scenes and shots that might work well in black and white. When I go out on a street photography walk, I'm most often attracted to colour and that usually plays a big part in my composition. But what I also think about when I do that is what might work in black and white too. I ask myself, what is the focus of the image? If what attracted me to the scene wasn't about colour and colour doesn't really work in the composition, then I'll try it in black and white when I get home. The second way is to go out and shoot black and white with intention. You go out with a specific plan to shoot in black and white only, and this will inform the way that you see and the things that you look out for to make a great composition. So now we've explored a couple of different ways you might want to experiment with black and white street photography, let's dive into the tips that you can use to take your images to the next level. The first tip is minimalism. You can use compositional techniques like leading lines, rule of thirds, shooting wide, and using shapes in negative space, but I won't go too in depth on composition in this video. However, you can check out the video I did on this if you want to. Minimalism is also great for beginners as it allows you to stay further away from your subjects, which can be less nerve wracking. Black and white is also great for minimalism as it gives you the opportunity to cut out distracting elements and keep shots really crisp and clean. The next tip is creating contrast. Shooting in black and white is all about contrast. So when you're out, you can look for contrast in light, contrast in shades of color, which will then convert into black and white in post. You can use light and shadow to frame or isolate a subject. And you also want to pay attention to the background, arranging subjects with space around them, maybe isolating a subject can be a great way to create contrast. Mood, grain and grit in your images can have quite strong emotional connotations, which is exactly what you want to use to create an emotional reaction from the viewer. You can try underexposing your images or using a high ISO to add grain or add grain in post to experiment with mood and mystery. Shooting black and white at night or on a rainy day can be great for this. Looking for shapes and objects you can use to make an interesting composition works really well in black and white. You can use shapes for framing, adding contrast, adding layers and other visual elements to your images. Subject driven images and details. In black and white you can really put the emphasis on the subject in your images. If you use a longer focal length to compose a scene and leave out contextual information, then using black and white can make really reverential and engaging subject driven photographs. If you don't shoot that much black and white already, I definitely recommend going through your back catalogue of images you've already created and converting some of them into black and white to see what you think and to give you ideas for what works in black and white and what doesn't. You might find that some of your images you've taken before fit really well in black and white, or you might just think that they don't work at all, which is absolutely fine. So yeah, just having a look through old images can give you a bit of a flavour for how you might want to start taking new images the next time you go out with your camera. It can be really beneficial to shoot in black and white with intention, so you can train yourself to see and think in black and white. It's really hard to do that, especially when you first start using black and white, but by having your camera set in black and white, it will make it easier to start seeing your surroundings in terms of shade and contrast rather than color. Most cameras these days will have the functionality to set your camera in black and white, so if you can do that, definitely give it a try. Making light the star of your shot can be a really strong way to use black and white to your advantage. Strong light and harsh shadows creates instant contrast. So that's something you can experiment with as color isn't needed to make the composition sing. It's instead all about how the light interacts with the environment or how a human might interact with the light and shadow to make an interesting shot. I think a lot of the time when people try black and white for the first time, they go out and take some shots that they think look good in black and white, or maybe they have a black and white sitting on their phone, they get the photos into their editing software, and then they can't really make them look 
quite right. I think a lot of people might assume editing in black and white is quite simple, quite easy, just because you know you desaturate the image, add in a bit of contrast and bam, you're done. You don't have to worry about looking at the different colors in the image and stuff like that. But actually I think editing in black and white is quite complex and it really depends on what kind of image you've taken as to how you might want to edit it in black and white. And there are whole different ways of editing in black and white. So I won't go too in detail in this video as this video is not really all about editing, but I'll just give a couple of tips that I use to create my black and white photographs in Lightroom. So the first image I'm going to start off editing is this one I took recently in Manchester. I like the reflection, I like the texture in this stuff on the window and how it kind of echoes in this person's hair. I think it'll make a really nice shot in black and white. Before I start, like I said earlier, there's a whole bunch of different ways you might want to edit in black and white. And this is just a really quick breakdown of how I do my black and white edits in the style that I enjoy. So I'm going to start by making sure I've got an even exposure by pulling up the exposure slider here. Next, I'm going to pull all of the color out of the image by pulling down the saturation slider. And this is the basic black and white edit that I'm going to work from. Next, I just like to spend a bit of time just tweaking the highlights, shadows, whites and black sliders. I always tend to bring the highlight slider down on my black and white shots because I really enjoy having as much texture and detail in the, in the highlights as possible. Just start moving the sliders around to get to a point where I'm happy and I quite like this high contrast punchy style. I'm just doing this quite quickly. Usually I spend quite a lot of time just tweaking the image to the point I'm really happy with it. I also like to add in a bit of texture and a tiny bit of clarity just to try and express that kind of 35 millimeter film like quality and just have a bit more kind of grit and texture in my shots. Next, I like to add in an S curve in the tone curve box, otherwise known as the film curve, because I guess it gives a bit of a 35 millimeter film like vibe. So to do that, you just put in three dots and then pull in a really subtle S shape to the box. Just do a little bit more tweaking now I've added in the S curve. I'm getting to the point now that I'm really happy with the shot. So to finish it off, I'm just gonna give it a bit of a crop. I really enjoy the four by five crop. In this case, I'm just gonna bring the crop down so the texture at the top of the image fits into the first third. And lastly, just to give it a little bit more punch and a little bit more mood, I'm gonna add in a bit of grain. So just head down to the grain slider at the bottom and pull in some grain. I'll often spend a bit of time experimenting with the size and the roughness until I get to a point where I'm happy with the grain in the image as well. So there you go. That's a basic quick edit in black and white of one of my shots. You can see the before and the after. When I find a nice edit on an image, I'll go ahead and copy the settings. I'll often add this into a preset so I can then use the settings to edit quicker in other images going forward. So next I'm gonna have a quick look at this image here which I took in Morocco. For me, it's all about the texture and the shadow and I think it'll work really well in black and white. I'm just gonna paste the settings I just copied from the previous image. And actually, I think that looks really, really cool. There's not a lot of tweaking I need to do to this particular shot. Sometimes the preset or the settings you've captured from an, an image already that wouldn't work quite well on the next shot you put them in, depending on how it's exposed and the subject matter and stuff like that. So if you're using previous settings, you'll, you'll often need to tweak it to fit the image that you're editing. So just a little tweak there on the sliders. And finally, I'm gonna also crop this image just to get rid of this distraction on the bottom left-hand side. And I'm also gonna use the heel tool to get rid of this little black dot, which is a bit distracting. So there, that one was really quick and easy because we used the settings from the first photo and you can see the before and the after there. And finally, this image that I took in Brighton, which I think is gonna look really good in black and white. Color is definitely not the main focus of this shot and it's a little bit distracting anyway, so I think black and white is the way to go. Again, I'm gonna paste in the settings that I captured previously. And this one for me just needs a little bit of tweaking to bring down the highlights a little bit more, bring down the whites, so it's a little bit blown out bring in a little bit more contrast. And there you go, another image edited in black and white really quickly by copying the settings. There's the before and there's the after. You can get great street shots in any conditions with black and white, with bad weather often adding to the mood. Usually gray overcast conditions can be really boring for street photography, but if you shoot in black and white, you can still find those contrasts and subjects to make great shots. So next time it's overcast and you're not sure about going out with your camera, try black and white and see what you come up with. It's important to note that trying to improve a mediocre photo by putting it in black and white doesn't work. Though often it can be tempting to try and do that. 
There's nothing wrong with going back through your archive of images to see if they work in black and white, but just blindly desaturating an average image and making it contrasty is not a good idea, because rarely will that produce good work. Having said that, I definitely recommend to experiment with the tips I've mentioned. Try some new ideas, and in the long run, you can add strong black and white composition to your street photography skill set. Shooting in black and white is a lot of fun, and you should definitely try it, even if you usually only shoot in colour. But there are lots of other kinds of street photography you can do, which can sometimes be a bit confusing and hard to work out, especially as a beginner. So what other types of street photography are there, and how can street photography be defined? Well, check out this video to find out more, where I explore the answer to those questions.